Hello everyone, we are Haidu CDI and we are here today to walk you through our design for brackish water desalination and its ability to provide citizens in Kern County, California with quality and safe drinking water. With rising global population, exponential industrial expansion, and unfavorable climate advances, the availability of fresh water and its shrinking resources in many regions of the United States became a prominent challenge. Many regions in the United States have endured water shortages in the past decade, yet they contain available underground brackish water deposits that could be converted and purified into safe water for everyday household use. Currently, companies have been developing desalination methods combining two or more of the technologies to increase water recovery rate and efficiency in desalination. As the need for water desalination increases and as the technologies develop, it is extremely crucial to consider the environmental and safety impacts. Desalination has become one of the fastest growing water treatment methods to be adopted for the production of clean potable water from seawater, brackish water, and groundwater saline sources. Historically, distillation-based technologies have remained a major approach to water desalination until the development of membranes. Nowadays, reverse osmosis membranes, which is the most commonly used technology for desalination, accounts for 69% share of the installed desalination capacity. In recent years, capacitive deionization technologies has been developed and improved to be industrially suitable for water desalination as well. Looking at the water desalination market, the world desalination market is currently valued at 17.7 billion US dollars. Moreover, the global desalination industry is expected to grow with a staggering compound annual growth rate of 9.51% from 2020 to 2027 to reach a market value of 32.1 billion US dollars. That being said, Hydro CDI's objective is to design a brackish groundwater desalination plant to produce 50,000 meters cubed per day of potable water, enough for 150,000 people in Kern County, California. Some important and critical factors that we have considered throughout the design process in no particular order are finding methods to optimize our design to increase the capital while minimizing costs, ensuring that we are producing quality and safe drinking water for consumers, and designing a facility in a way where we can reduce emissions from high energy consumption. So what makes our design innovative? Our design for the process uses technologies of reverse osmosis membranes in combination with capacitive deionization. This hyper design will help mitigate major challenges of membrane desalination, which include high energy consumption and large brine disposal concerns. We can see that throughout this process, some other major units of the design include water pretreatment, water post-treatment, energy recovery devices, and brine recycling and disposal. Now, what exactly is reverse osmosis? Essentially, it's a process where water is pumped through a membrane and moves from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. The membrane removes ions from the brackish water and produces a purified water stream called permeate. Our units are designed as an array of consisting of pressure vessels and membrane elements, which numbers can be manipulated to optimize the performance. Last semester, we used a simulation software called Windflows by Suez Water Technologies and Solutions to help design this unit, and we were able to validate this model through the RO governing equations. Additionally, to optimize the lifetime of RO membranes, water pretreatment is required to prevent any scaling or fouling. Lastly, for our design, the RO unit has a total recovery rate of 75%. The second main unit of our process is the CDI system. The CDI removes ions from water using a voltage between a pair of electrodes. One electrode, which is positively charged, adsorbs anions, and the other electrode, which is negatively charged, adsorbs cations. The CDI typically goes through two cycles, adsorption where the ions are absorbed from the water, and desorption where the ions are removed for disposal when the electrodes are saturated with ions. To size the CDI, equations derived from Langmuir adsorption were solved in a MATLAB simulation, and the final results were obtained through the simulation by considering design constraints such as capex. The main parameters of the CDI unit are the operating voltage at 2 volts, a total of 130 CDI stacks, and a power requirement of 0.67 kilowatt hours per cube. To improve the design of the CDI stack, we decided to implement brine recycling. This diagram shows how brine recycling works over one CDI stack. First, 130 meters cubed per day of the inlet water flows to the brine recycle tank. The inlet water then flows into the stack for a two minute absorption cycle. After absorption is complete, the inlet water valve closes and the brine recycling valve opens, allowing water from the tank to flow through the CDI stack during desorption, which happens for two and a half minutes. This water then goes back to the tank and keeps on recirculating after each desorption cycle until it reaches a concentration of three and a half molar of NaCl, which allows for a purge to occur every 24 hours. A decision was made to have two brine recycle tanks where they alternate in operation each day. Uh, this prevents mixing of waters. So when one tank is recirculating 
the brain to and from the CDI unit. The other is disposing the collected brain from the previous day of operation and is being refilled with CDI feed water. Overall, implementing brain recycling reduces our brain production by 99%. A summary of the profitability analysis for our plant is shown in the table above, along with a graph showing our projected discounted cumulative cash flow. The average net profit margin is a ratio of the average after-tax profit to revenue for each year over the 30-year service life, and this was found to be 33.82%. Net present value is used to determine how much an investment is worth by finding the value of all future cash flows and discounting this value to the present. Since our NPV is positive, this investment is profitable. Next, the minimum acceptable rate of return is the minimum profit that an investor expects to make from an investment. For a new process in a new market with a high level of risk, a good value for MAR is 24 to 32%. The discounted cash flow rate of return is defined as the interest rate that results in an NPV of zero. Since our DCFRR is greater than our MAR, the investment is profitable. Finally, the discounted payback period is the number of years that it takes until the accumulated discounted net cash flows offset the initial capital investment. For our plot, it will take around three years to break even from the initial investment while considering the time value of money. A sensitivity analysis is completed to evaluate the impact of changing revenue, variable operating expenses, and fixed capital investment on three measures of profitability. Tornado plots like the one on this slide are used to show how much each profitability measure deviates from its original value when each parameter is changed. This plot shows that net present value is most sensitive to changes in revenue. Revenue and NPV are directly correlated, and a 20% change in revenue changes the NPV by around 70%. Lastly, I will discuss the social health and environmental considerations of this project. For the social aspect of the project, we aim to combat water scarcity by sustainably providing potable water for 150,000 people, and we are generating around 170 jobs in Kern County. For health, we, were, we will ensure that our water meets the California secondary drinking water standards. For safety, we aim to ensure the safety of all operators on site and in the nearby surroundings. We have conducted a high-level hazard analysis and implemented safeguards to minimize each risk that we found. Finally, for the environmental aspect, we have implemented brine recycling and energy recovery devices to reduce the waste brine and energy consumption. We hope that you have learned a bit about our capstone project and the work that we have done these past two semesters to design and optimize our process. Thank you for watching and we would be happy to take any questions in our Zoom meeting room.